MJ, my man, thanks for coming. You brought a spread. Tell me about this. Tell me about this. This is the first time on the show that anybody brings me a gift, first of all, which I appreciate. But you brought, like, you know, my favorite gift, which is food. What, what, what do we have here today? What did you bring me? All right. First of all, thank you for having me, brother. I appreciate that. Yeah, the food is actually, it's uh, is Central Asia, more like close to Uzbek and Tajik traditional food. Okay. Which has like been for, since the years, you know, centuries. So this is the, the one is the dumplings. Come with the lamb, you know, the way it cooks is steamed. The dumplings you tried are completely different, but this is yeah. you have to try this. Now, one. now you asked me lamb or beef when you were when we were talking before this. I said lamb, that I picked, or I said both. But is so, lamb yeah. the right choice? Is that yeah. the yeah lamb? That okay. Usually, yeah, okay. you better go with lamb when you get these uh, dumplings. You call it manti. Okay. Yeah, manti, manti. or mantu. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah, this is lamb. The one over there is sambosa. Like traditionally, like Arab people, Turkish people, and most people they have it like sambosa. Mm -hmm. Is is it a, a thunder sambusa? It's, okay. It's, it's, it's way different than it, but it's that beef. You were saying this is cooked underground? Yes, the, kind okay. of ground, yeah. Yeah, it's it's not in a microwave or like the oven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so it a different flavor. Yes, yeah, so, Okay. Yeah. All right. And that Here traditional we bread, we usually eat all day, every day. Our people like, you know. And we have pilov. Pilov. We call pilov, osh. Okay. Osh, pilov. And it's pilaf. Pilaf, yeah. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. like all people, they call pilaf. Yeah, you can't pronounce it as we say pilaf. But yeah, pilaf <laughs> is like different. People cook in different way. Okay. But this is the the original pilaf, where it comes from, you know what I mean? So, so in your culture and in the sport of MMA and all this stuff, you guys can eat this and still stay in shape? Uh, it's You can still <laughs> or, eat it, but when you come close to the, you know, fight camp, you cut okay. it off. At least a month before the fight camp, like... No more, weeks, no more carbs. No, it's it. big carb, yeah, big energy, but you, mm, it depends who's cutting weight. Yeah. But I don't recommend like staying with this for whole camp and stuff. Yeah. You know, it's, it's too much calories in here. Yeah. yeah. Should we? Should we start? Should we? You want us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, brother. It's you for you, what, brother. What should I? Uh... Uh, I won't. It, this is you have to. You have to eat like warm. It's still warm. All right. I just picked, picked it up. Yeah. Just they just cooked it. Try that no. one. Make sure you put some. Uh, the labni, Some of that. yeah, okay. the sour cream, yeah, put that on, yeah, I'm excited. Try it. uh, like I said, this is a first. We might be out of focus, you know, it might not work, but we're gonna we're gonna enjoy it. <laughs> It'll be on camera. All right, so we were talking right before we started, and you were telling me that you're still training. Oh yeah, you're still training, but you're not. You're not getting ready for a fight. You're not thinking no. about fighting. I was actually thinking about getting in fights before I start, like, uh, like my, when I like start my management career. It's not a long time ago. I was just, I was fired up, coming training. It was just, okay. I'm gonna get fired. Coach John, Marquez, uh, Daniel Gracie, my coaches. You know, it's like, yeah, you should try. You should go 125, 135, whatever weight class you feel easy, you know, you okay. feel comfortable. But once I decided to stay with these guys, helping these guys, you know, with the management. So, and, how, so, so tell me what you're, well, first of all, why don't we go back? Now that we're eating <laughs> the food from, yeah. from, you know, your traditional food. Tell me, where did you grow up? Like, how, how do you get to Philly today? Okay. Uh, I was born and raised in Tajikistan. Okay. I don't think a lot of people know about Tajikistan today because one of the smallest countries being part of the Soviet Union. When you say Soviet Union, they'd be like, okay, so there's a lot of stand stands and it's like one of those ones. But okay. like exactly where it's located is one of the, you know, interesting locations, perfect place, you know, great nature. We have like seasons, four seasons up okay. by the mountains. And it's kind of like 93% you know, of the all surface areas, mountains there. Oh. Yeah, it's 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 located in Central Asia. You know, we see if you know Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan. Okay, it's close to that. We border to Uzbekistan. Yeah. Now, did you tell me about your family? You know, all my family back home. I was born and raised in Tajikistan. All my brothers there. My, you know, I have three brothers. I have a younger sister. But we've been traveling around Tajikistan, like China, Russia. 
but this is the furthest I come. Like I'm, I'm, I'm further away from everybody. Okay. Like, this is. So why, um, what you know, how was growing up like with a family, big family? Obviously, you know, um, did you leave because of fighting? Like, what, what was the reason for why you left? No, actually, I've, I've been training like since I was what seven, eight. I started with taekwondo and did a lot of you know, judo. After that, you know, then we start, we start growing up. We, everybody grows up doing something there, you know. It's kind of traditionally you get into school, they ask you, your kid has to go either this way, this way, anything, but you have to do some contact sport. Yeah. Yes, it's big. This is like elementary school, like you're young at that? Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Like six years old. Everybody, like 90% of kids are training to do something. That's kind of like Cuba. Cuba does that. Yes. They put you into, you know, what do you want? You want to box? You want to wrestle? You want, you know, yeah, they always Dagestan, put you into a form of sport. Yeah, that side, you know, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, mm -hmm. like most of those countries, like most part of them, like, you gotta you gotta make sure you know your kid is grown up in in the right direction you know staying active healthy why yeah. so why is that is that because they want you to just be the best person you can be it's not really to get you at the highest level of that sports more like a you know people say different things about like why is so but what i think is like our part is you know we've been in, in a civil war people grew up you know fighting and stuff and it's pretty much First, you have to know, you know, how to defend yourself, and then, then, like it keep, it definitely keeps the kid away from trouble. You know, there's many things going on, especially in that side. Yeah. It's so tough. Yeah. So it's it's more um, basing it on the history, yeah. and and making you like the strongest man for your family for yeah. you know, that you can be. Yeah, we can say that. But traditionally in Tajikistan, the first sport is it called kurash. It's just like judo. We have, you know, celebrations every year, all these, you know, holidays. People go outside on the grass, you know, like by the heels. A thousand people come and watch. They just throw in each other, went in the cars, apartments, houses. So it's big. The kurash is like a, with the gi. It's just yeah. pretty much like judo, but, you know, kind of different rules in there, I can say. Yeah. Wow. So you grew up doing that? Yeah. And then how far in like schooling did you get before you moved? You know, kind of when was it that you decided to, to leave the country? Uh, I grew up, I finished the school, you know, high school. And I, you know, I went to the university for like first year, first year, year of the university. Then I was like, okay, I want to do something better because it was really far from everything. And then, you know, we been. We grew up watching fights, you know, all the UFC, all the things, Pride at that time, American movies, of course. Yeah. Everybody dreamed to come over here to the United States, you know. Okay. And I was like, okay, let me go try. Why not try to go, um, you know, to study, go like a student? Okay, so you came for school. Yeah, I came, I came for the school. Gotcha. Okay. Now, what did you want to do? What, what type of career were you after? Uh, that's, that's, that's the thing, like, every time you want to do something, you end up in different ways. But... I came, I wanted to study, but at the same time, when I came to the United States, there's many things changed in my, in my life, in my life, like, okay, I wanna, do, I wanna train. I, saw, I found big gyms, I see these big names, like training, and they're like, oh, I'm, I'm gonna go with the sport. Then I start training, studying, you know, a little bit in the school, then start working, kind of, you know, hard times, you know, you, you had to have a good income at that time to, you know, only study in the school, but I, was, I had to work. And study. You were paying and for your own school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You were in New York. Where were you at? Yeah, Brooklyn, New York. New York. Yeah. Okay. I came to Kingsborough Community College, okay. and yeah, I started training and Henzo, Henzo Gracie, okay. the original gym. Then I moved. A to pretty Brooklyn. good gym to go into, right? Right away. Yes, sir. I started there. Then I moved to the the little gym and uh, still under the Henzo Gracie with uh, Peter Lawson. I was a head coach in Brooklyn, right. New York. Then I was I was training there until I moved back to back home. Yeah. Okay, so you went back home. Yeah. At one point. Yeah, I came 2007. I stayed here for three years, and I traveled back home. It was the time to go back home. You know, miss my family, and I was like, let's go see what's going on. You know, went until I got there when everything changed. When I got home, like, yeah, I want to go back to the United States. That's the place I want to be at. Okay. I love my country, but. You see, there's opportunities here. Is it because of that, the opportunities? Yeah, is definitely. Definitely, yeah. That's funny because, I, so I just got back from Puerto Rico, which is where I was born, and I was there until I was eight, you know, eight years old, and then we moved here. Um, you know, so we go back with the family. Like, I brought, you know, obviously my, my two young sons, and, you know, trying to teach them about everything. And, by the way, you eat, eat up with me. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I enjoy um, it. It's delicious. It's like... 
Do you like it? That's I don't care if I end up with a white beard full of the... <laughs> it's delicious. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Um, so I was... You know, it, it's just funny to see if they would be interested in, like, living there or whatever. It's, we came here for, 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 for the same thing, for being able to have opportunities. You know, my dad wanted to give us a better life and all that stuff, you know. So that's why we came here for the same reason. So it's hard, you know, as much as you love your country, as much as you want to go back as much as possible and see your family and do all that, um, it's the opportunities right. here and it's nice, you know, you, it's just, there's yeah. certain benefits to being in the United States. Definitely. It's just, it is what it is, it's, right? This country is blessed, man. It's yeah. so blessed. Most people don't know about it, who don't travel, don't know what's going on right. outside the overseas. But this country is... So how often do you get to go back? Uh, once uh, once in a couple of years. I'm planning to go next year. Yeah. Okay. Now my uh, bro, my wife here, I, I, my daughter was born here. Yeah? Yeah, she's walking around, running around. Now. How old yeah. your daughter? She's a year and a half today, yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah. today? Yes. And you came on her birthday? Yeah, I mean, it's a year and a half. We don't celebrate, oh, okay, okay, we okay, don't okay. celebrate birthdays. Like, oh, you don't? No, okay. we don't. Like for her, maybe, you know, to, to just, you know, be thankful say, yeah. every time. But like, like celebrate as a birthday thing, we don't do it, you know. We gotcha. Do it. That's just, that's a culture thing. that you. That's the religion, yes. A religion thing. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, do you think... Well, congratulations, obviously, Thank on, you, on your brother. kid. That's Thank awesome. You. On my birthday, I'm going to fight. One of my guys, they fight. Is that right? In Florida, we go fight. Yeah, no birthday. We go so maybe fight. no birthday, but it's a good luck. Maybe it's a good it, luck. It, that's the birthday. That's the fight. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's still good. So then your your birthday is this weekend? Uh, on May 22nd. May, like, oh, yeah. May 22nd. Yeah, we already set up the my fight. My birthday is May 23rd. Nice. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. My, May twenty third. May 23rd. Right? Nice. Yeah, look at that. See? Uh, we got <laughs> we got to come back and eat some more. Yeah, this man. Yeah, I can celebrate it however you want. We don't have to, you know, we don't have to blow any candles out, but that's great. That's we, great. we can eat together. Um, that's awesome, man. So how has it been kind of raising the kid here? It's good. Yeah, it's good. I mean, we don't we don't get much opportunity. Like we don't have a big experience because she doesn't go no school yet. She's staying home with my wife. You know, we, she just she literally like recently start wa walking and yeah, running yeah, yeah. around yeah but definitely she's gonna go to school she's gonna get together you know for the language for the culture definitely like it's good it's it's good it's like i said i'm thankful man there's a lot of opportunities here i can provide for my family mm -hmm. it's are you ex it, uh, you're excited to teach her the culture also and keep her like you'll bring her back home and oh all yeah that stuff of course to make sure course. that she grows she's up with gonna that. stay with the culture definitely she's That's gonna great. stay like tight with the culture because you know that's how I think it's right to yeah. do, especially with the daughter. You know, we go travel back home, come back here. Yeah. And then, yeah, she's going to be here for, for now we're here. We don't think moving anywhere for the next maybe like 10 years. Okay. Yeah. So I, I had a really hard time teaching my, not, I, I, did, I think I did good at teaching them the culture. My family speaks Spanish to them. You go to my family's house, they cook the traditional, yeah. you know, meals. It's, it's, so they, they see it. They're very, you know, they're very part of it. Uh, but I had a very hard time teaching them Spanish because my wife doesn't speak Spanish. Uh, she understands it all, basically, but she doesn't speak Spanish. So it's, it's weird for me to switch to Spanish just for them at home. That's just an excuse. I, yeah. I could have done better. Yeah. But now, you know, one's 11, the other one's 7. So I have a, I don't know if I missed the boat on that. but You guys have a good, like, culture. It's, it's yeah. all in strong it's very culture. family, very family oriented, you know. Yes, it's good. I, so. I respect that. I like that. Yeah. Yes. So we, you know, we get together every weekend with, you know, with my parents and my sister and, uh, you know, just it's nice. It's nice to uh, to just see everybody, you know, uh, and my wife's from here. So it's, you know, two different cultures, but her family loves my family's culture just because it's, you know, yeah. we're very and respect. Yeah, you know, we're very huggy and loud and, and eat and, that's, that's and drink. Very and, nice. and, and, you know, that's very important, actually. <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah, it is. Um, all right, so then you're here, with your wife, your daughter. So then, what makes you come down to Philly, from New York? I've traveled, you know. I've been almost all over. I've been Midwest. I was in West Side, and I was in California for a little while. I was, you know, tra training, living there. But I'm kind of when I came to uh, United States, I landed in 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 East Coast, right in New York. Mm -hmm. It's like more close to our culture, mm, you know. That's that made me just more be like more East Coast person, you know. Right. When I was in California, even I was in Colorado, is like more close to East. But I was like, okay, I think I think this, I think that, I want to go back to East Coast. But I didn't know where I want to be exactly. Mm -hmm. Then I had a friend of mine. I have a lot of friends who lived here, like since back when when we came. 
Okay. Actually, well, like Tajikistan, we opened in the embassy 2006 and seven. There was a lot of guys coming, stu you know, students and, you know, then at that time, and I had my friends like, hey, why don't you come to Philly, man? It's close to New York. It's about an hour yeah. away from New York. We got AC here. We go DC. Everything is close by. Then I started coming over, you know, visiting a couple of times a month. I loved it. That where I live in is, is pretty much I feel home. Like when I get out, see all the cultures all over. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Where you live in Philly right now? Uh, northeast Philadelphia. In Northeast, really? Yes. It's good. It's very nice. Where, where I live, like, we got stores down the block. We okay. go find whatever we buy at home, use, you know, eat, everything. It's just like that. So what part of Northeast Philly are we talking about? I will, uh, Penny Pack. Penny, Penny Pack okay. Park. Yeah. Okay. Like, where it's, like, kind of middle of the Northeast. Okay. Yeah. My family does eye care, and our offices, I mean, I guess that's considered North Philly, not, it's, like, more Lehigh. Oh, that, that's North. Yeah, yeah, that's North, but I always, for some reason, confuse it. That's where the gym's close, like where we train at. Because like, it's like Kensington area. Yeah, right? we, we, the gym is literally like of the uh, Lehigh and North American, like not far oh, from where. Oh, wow. So we, so my dad opened his office in on Lehigh in 90, I mean, I guess maybe like 94 or something. It's been a long time. Uh, he's been there in the hospital there, and then he's finally, he bought a building, and he's like, they're opening a brand new office over there, but still... That's Lehigh and I guess the street before Second Street. It's around it's America. Right it's there. right there. It's right there. Like it's right before look North at that. America. It's I gotta go like to the gym. Two minutes away from your office. Really? You can walk like three minutes. It's right like three blocks down. Maybe yeah. maybe four. It's Fourth Street in Lehigh. But either way, it's 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 it's, it's, it's right. It's in the neighborhood. Yeah. yeah it's so right uh, I'm waiting for somebody to invite me to the gym just so I can go check you guys. I'm gonna invite you to the gym, <laughs> of course. Yeah. You know, I used to box a little bit so I can hit some pads and and, and feel old and of sluggish. Of course. Well, we definitely need to come over. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to go get embarrassed for a little bit. It's fun. It's fun sweating and getting a workout in. Um, so, how often are you training? Um, is that like is that just part of your lifestyle at this point? Yes, definitely. Because you're in love with the sport no matter I've what. I've been training all my life. Yeah. I've been like, since I stopped walking, I start, I've been training uh, all the sports. I tried this and that, but I've been, you know, active all the time. But now MMA is part of my life. And then, yeah, I come, I come train. I come just go with these killers in there, you know, make sure I stay in shape too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, good yeah. To, it's good to see, it you know. Is, to, yes. It's hard to... To get too far from it, right? You want to stay as close to it as possible. Oh, yeah. and feel I, like you're you still part of that. You have that itch every day. You be away, do something. I want to run back to the gym. Go, go, get there. Sweat. It's it's yeah. steam room. You come in there, you'll see. I've seen the pictures. It. Everybody has a steam coming off the bodies. Different vibe. That's it's awesome. different workout. Yeah, we got the, our coaches, the best coaches in the world. I'm telling yeah. you, you have to come over. I would love to come, man. I'm yes, telling you, you I, might, to. I might have to. Um, Visit the, the new building and then walk over to you guys and, and, and check it out. You got to let me know when you're over there. That's what's up. Yes. Um, all right. So you're in those gyms. Very high caliber of fighters, right? Yes, sir. Whether yeah. we're talking from amateur through pro, through pro. at yeah. the highest level, really solid fighters, trainers, strong family, it seems like. And you guys are just supporting right. each other nonstop. Like brothers. Yes. It's, it's awesome. Like I've said it before, but everybody is always supporting whoever's fighting at whatever level um and just showing that love at all times that's that, a really cool thing that's to the have. main that's that was the main reason i stopped in philadelphia i stayed in and start uh, stayed with this team because i've been in the big camps you know like big big camps where there's a lot of superstars growing there but it was good some gyms was good some was like okay but you you don't see like that tight family, you know, like this close, this much close. Bec it's because of the coaches, you know. Yeah. We're, you know, they always keep reminding us to stay, you know, loyal, be together, and that eventually is gonna build up in, in, into you. Like, okay, I have to follow that. I have to follow that. Even when the guys like, kind of, in the middle, loyalty, no loyalty, outside here and there, but you know. You look at somebody else, they've just been so tight with the coach, so tight with each other, it makes you be like them. Yeah. So this is, yeah, I grew up in that type of life, right. yeah. And then this is the main thing, it makes us different than other gyms. Right. We're very close, we check on each other, we're not training, hey, what's up, how you doing, why are you not here? You know, it just, little things, but it makes it family. Right. Yeah. So, 
what when do you decide that you want to go on, on a different side of the, the the MMA world and start managing and getting into the business kind of side of things? Uh, well, I, when I came like second time to United States, I came uh, when I was here 2007 and moved back 2010. I came 2015. Like I moved to to United States. Like I decided to move and stay here, do you know what I love to do. Then I was like training, traveling, being here and there. And at that time, I was helping a lot of guys overseas. You know, not only from Tajikistan. There was guys from different countries, helping them get them competitions, come over. You know, help them set them jobs, place to live, get them crib, put them like you know some part-time jobs. Because most of them, they don't speak language, they don't know the country. And I was like helping them to get to certain levels, you know, come compete. Some of them, they stayed in high level competition right now. Some of them, they travel back. But the thing is, I was doing it for, for, for a long time. And then, then I decided when I came here, like, okay, I'm helping these guys. And at the same time, I, I start loving it, you know, seeing these guys growing. Like, it is something I'm doing, and not big part, but like, okay, I want to start helping these guys in the real deal. Right. You know, it's like, okay, we're going to we're gonna do it in a professional way now. I'm going to take these guys, come over here. So my main focus right here, bringing most of the talents we have overseas. You know, most, there's a lot of things happening overseas we can't, we don't have, most of the people, they can't see it. They don't, because these guys, they don't have opportunity to show what they have. So main thing is like set it up. We have big gyms back home now. We're together with these gyms we have, you know, helping each other. We'll send them some videos over there, get some combinations from Coach John. Oh, really? so, yes, we just, uh, big gyms, we're connected now. It's like big family. Back home, I got uh, maybe like over 20 fighters, killers. Like, yeah. they can't wait to come over here. We, I can't wait to bring them so over you're here. Almost make, so you're almost like prepping them or getting them trained from here. Yeah. Over there, so that way they're getting yes, the best. Sir. Yeah. Wow, that's great. Yeah, that was old Coach John's uh, idea. And we started getting some little videos. I'm on the phone with them every time, every day. They're fighting now. I'm sending them over in Russia, in Europe, in Turkey, in Dubai. They're going out for competitions, for fights, you know. We're keeping them busy until the, like, the, unfortunately, the COVID situation, the yeah, embassies yeah. and stuff, you know. Once the embassy open, like, open, open. I'm gonna start bringing them over. over. Yeah, they're gonna come here, stay with us, live with us, and fight out of our gyms here. Represented Tajikistan, but stay with the that's Marquez awesome. MMA and Daniel Gracie. Yeah. See, that's amazing because then you're gonna also bring them, and their life is gonna be. You're gonna make their life as easy as possible coming over here, so they can focus yes. on fighting. They can yes. focus on that family Pretty environment. Much, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Plus, you, I'm sure that makes you proud because you're of helping course. your 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 people. When I was like my time, when I was, uh, I'm like. I'm 33 now. I'm about to 33. Okay. But when I had, like, I see these guys like 20 years, 22, 21, mm -hmm. 18, 24. These ages, they train. They want to be, like, successful. But I, when I was training that time, I didn't have the support. Right. Like, somebody like me. Hey, come over here. I'm going to help you. Yes. Somebody sending you videos, not, getting you ready to go, and then yeah, getting you ready when you came get here. Get attention from Daniel Gracie, Joel Marquez, all these Shh. guys. Killers, Sean Brady, Pat Sabatini, the training right. this like they know where they're coming to. Yeah. And they're so excited yeah. and they're so right. motivated, you know? Right. And by the time they get here, they'll be at even a higher level than, than you Definitely. started with. You know? yeah. When they they come to ready to go. Wow. Let me so, what, what else should I try here? Uh, that was amazing, but I don't wanna uh try the pillow. Try the pillow. Yeah, try the pillow. And you can't you can have this too, but pillow is like, this and the Here's the thing, the pillow we do like traditionally, like you 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 celebrate wedding, mm -hmm. you celebrate you know amazing. some I'm to see how some I can you know for this holidays, uh -huh. you definitely have to cook and you know feed people. That's is that lamb? That's the, that's uh, that's beef. Beef, right? That's beef. Okay. Yeah, but it comes with lamb, but pretty much traditionally it's like with the with the beef. You're not gonna have it with this. Yeah. I am just gonna. I'm not gonna have any dinner tonight. <laughs> Oh, that's, yeah, it's, it's very amazing. heavy. It's heavy. And it's good, too. Eat something, yeah. yeah. Mm. That's amazing. I was waiting, like, okay, I'm getting to get out of the gym. I'm coming from the gym right now. I mean, with hot training, I was like, I'm going to Is this go. your first meal since you worked out, since you were in the gym? Yes. So you need it more than me. 
This is great. I'm trying to stay low on these things because there's a lot of calories in it. Coming back from Puerto Rico, I uh, I decided that I need to lose a lot of weight. <laughs> so this will be my my last nice big meal. Oh man, I gotta I gotta focus on something because well, this has meat inside it. Yes. Oh, that's beef in there. Yep. Oh yeah, you should you should come over to our gym. You should come over and get some training there. Okay. I hate even talking about. Sorry. I hate even talking about the little small time I spent training in boxing. But I do just just because I the, that's the passion. Like I wanted to. I thought at one point that I'd actually be a boxer. Silly, you know. Well, not right. And you know, I, my grandfather. You know. That, I, that's what I grew up. That's your grandfather. Oh yeah, yeah. That's my grandfather. Yeah. Him there. These are all his fighters. That's him in the army. Him uh, when Muhammad Ali went to Puerto Rico to do like a big exhibition fight because awesome. my grandpa like traveled. I didn't know that. He um he was in his corner, you know, because he was like the English kind of guy. And he said, yeah, that's all. That's all. That's all his stuff. That's, that's like great. my shirt from when that's I used to watch fights. Like, this is all. This is all of you know, all my stuff. Um, so I grew up with that. It's funny enough. In Puerto Rico, I finally meet my cousin that I hadn't seen maybe 25 years, 20 Ooh, something years. That's year. a long time. My uncle, my uncle died when, when he was very young and when I was, so, you know, he separated kind of, we, it was, we could never get him to, to come and he came for the first time. So we got to see him this time. It was great, but it was funny. So he's maybe a couple years older than me and um, he starts talking about all this stuff growing up. Now I haven't talked to him. The passion for fighting that he has as well. Still, right? It's, a, it's unbelievable. Like, we put the UFC on that night. They came over Saturday, la not, not last Saturday, Saturday before night. I put the fight on. We're talking about it. He's getting excited about it. He's talking about growing up, you know, and my grandfather buying him nothing but boxing stuff. Boxing gloves, boxing, punching bags, and Rocky, you All know, that, stuff. Right, so it's just fun. It's like, it's in the blood. It's in the blood. You can't deny yeah, it. Definitely. So growing up, I always thought, like, I'm going to make the grandfather proud. I'm going to get in... So I started, I went through like a bunch of gyms and I ended up at Joe Frazier's for a while. And I, I trained there for like probably like four or five years. Um, always thinking that I could do something. I just, then I fell in love with filmmaking and then I ended up going to California and doing that stuff. Um, but anyway, so that's always been, you know. Part of life. That's always been part yes, of life. definitely. So I still now, which I'm very far removed from it, still think that I'm like, I'm like, well, if a gym allows me I'll, come I'll come over. and hit some pads yes. because I still think that I can do something <laughs> you, you, you know you, you you won't find a better man who holds pads for you oh I heard John than John I heard I heard yes. we, we, I told him he's got to go on the show too he's always busy there? yes yeah. he is he's 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 been back out in Vegas came back went back to Vegas right come here CFFC is he back now or no? he's back now okay. well, we're getting ready for the next week cart uh, April first Sab second. Is Sabatini on coming up? Um, uh, April twenty twenty seventh, I think. Okay. I think it, it, but John, so John's not going back to Vegas for a while. No, he we were staying here for CFFC getting ready. This okay, so I can get him on the show. Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> last time he was gonna, I was trying to get him, but he was going for. I, I was guess. talking to him today a little bit. Yeah. Hey, coach. Yeah. He's like, uh, I'm. You see, I'm busy. I want to go. But, yeah, yeah. And Daniel also said, like, sort of give me the the thumbs up. No, I want to have everybody through here, man. You guys are you guys are awesome. Um, and hopefully I'll get to the gym. Yeah. But anyway, so, so discipline MMA, right? Yes. The name, discipline. What does discipline. that mean to you? It means everything. Yeah. That's the first thing you gotta have, especially in this sport. You know, in the martial arts, any martial art, either you do boxing, you do karate, you do MMA, anything. But I think even in life, it's very important having a discipline. So that's I grew up being disciplined by like my trainers since I was like everything was completely different. You know like old karate schools you know what i mean yeah, like, yeah 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 you have to follow this you can't you can't cross this line you gotta come straight do the thing a minute late it's a problem you know you have to be there before make, right. make sure you get everything and that's a lifestyle like now nah, that's that not makes, even the sport. That, that builds the discipline you know since the young age yeah. and the first thing came in my mind is like okay i'm gonna name okay i'm doing i'm doing a management i'm trying to help these guys but i also uh want to name a company and then 
what is going to be the first thing came in my mind is like discipline. Okay. Okay. I checked it. Is there any discipline MMA management? There was none. Nice. Like, it's us. That's meant to be. Yes. That's great. I love the name. Um, so what, what is, what does it entail to, to work with you as management? Like what, what are you help? What are you doing for me as a fighter? Just cause I don't really know the details, you know, there's certain managers that you know that have gotten so big, you know, yeah. you know, the, the Audis and like, you know, there's big managers, right. Yes. That, you know, but there's a lot that you don't know, but they're responsible still for getting these guys to the level to, to the next level. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we're doing this way, like uh, most of, like I started, like I said, from back home, like fighters I have from back home would be like, okay, you get ready. I want to set you some couple of fights around where they live at, like Tajikistan, Kazakhstan, Russia, China. Mm-hmm. See what you got. Let's see, they have a coaches. I'm actually managing uh, uh, the team, like the biggest team in the country now, like, okay. yeah, for jujitsu and grappling okay. but they turn into MMA there's a lot of killers in that gym and like okay my the head coach is my good friend like I'm gonna start with your students because you know I know you I trust you you're disciplined yeah. and you your students they gotta be like you know in the right way with loyalty is number one you know it's the business they grow a couple of fights right. and start changing and it's that's that's very important in this game then here, I, like my first fighter, like from the United States, is Christian Bobby. Yeah, yeah Christian Bobby. I saw, as soon as I saw him in the gym, like this kid is, a, he has a bright future. You know, he's good. He's still learning. Yeah, he's he's yeah, a good he, kid, man. He is. Yeah, yeah he was great yeah. on the show. Yeah, um, been getting ready. Like, yes. Tell me about his last fight. What were your thoughts? So, yeah, last fight. Last fight was it wasn't that his opponent was better than him. But he he came up like he was ready mentally, but when he hadn't fought since 2019, he came right. into the cage. He got in the cage. I, I saw he's like you know start losing the game, you know, like not focusing a lot, you know. He's like he well, was pay, paying attention and, and a lot of stuff that he shouldn't. But you know we live and learn. He get in there like two first. If you watch this two like first and second round. He was like still finding himself. Then the third, I start destroying the kid, like killing him. Yeah. But it was kind of late, was you know. Late. Yeah. yeah. But third round, like if he had it in the third round, he had definitely had in first and second. Mm-hmm. But it's like experience, you know. You come, you're ready. You you feel you're ready. You get in the cage. Then as soon as you get in the cage, and it, everything just changes. So it's almost good to get that experience now, though. Yes, early on. it's good for him. Nothing like we go, we go a couple of more fights. We we'll make sure mentally we we'll get ready, and you know, he needs to f- stay active more because of the COVID. We stay everybody like we had a couple other fight, fights didn't go our way, but it's it's fine. And, you know, we, we learned, he didn't right. get beat up and destroyed. Like, right. He we came back like third round. Like then he woke up in the third round. Like, I have to kill this kid, but it was yeah. kind of too late. Right. That um. I don't think in, in the sport of MMA is that big of a deal. Uh, you know, it's almost better for you to perform really well and still lose than for you to not, you know, to either not be prepared or just show your weakness as, as yourself as a fighter. But if you go in there and you show that your training was there and you did your best and you weren't the best man that night, that's all it. right. That all matters. It doesn't yeah. matter. You lose, you learn. And now we're working on that, you know, mistakes a lot with the coaches. You know, just a lot of reminder, a lot of, this is different. After that fight, Kart, no, you have to come and watch how we train there. So, and that fight wasn't a pro fight. That was... That was amateur. Yeah. That was amateur. Is he going to turn pro soon? No, or? we need, we wanted him to go to pro. I mean, actually, his level is ready for professional fights. Mm-hmm. But we need a couple of more fights, I think, at least two more fights. Okay. So we we'll make sure, you know, he's young. He got, we're not rushing with yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's young. He got, he got a good future. Everybody knows that. He like put in work with the top fighters, like professionals all day long. Whatever they do, he's doing the same thing. He's young. He's going to get back, get more experience. These fights, we used to back home, we used to fight every week. Sometimes you go like one night, you fight six, seven opponents. The same like five minutes, four minutes. Like you get, that's, that's different. Now he's kind of, you know, they have more time to get prepared and fight one fight. So Pretty much, is he has to fight every month. He can he can fight. Right. He's young. He doesn't cut a lot of weight. 
Now he's gonna the the, the fight was the catch weight, one forty pounds. Mm -hmm. But now we're gonna go back to one thirty five, his original weight to get him ready. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Everybody should remember that. Like he he's, he's a big future. He got yeah. a big future. It, seems, it seems like everybody supports him. You yeah. Know, the Sean Brady's he, he, the He's higher. a loyal kid, he's a hard worker. It didn't happen and it's good for him. Now he knows what to do. Yeah. He could go knock the guy out, but still had that, you know, yeah. need to go through all these three rounds. Yeah, yeah. These you don't three, learn anything from knocking yeah, somebody these out. These three rounds, it cost him a lot. For him, I see a lot of fire in his eyes right now. Like, no, I have to come prove that. How yeah. is he doing now in the gym? He's is good. he completely he got motivated? Little, his, his knee, that was the main, I think that could be the one of the big things that when the first round he just pulled, when it was pull guard, it was pulling his leg to control it. And then he heard, he said he heard like, you know, some sound came out of his knee. Yeah. But he, he, he checked, he went to the MRI this week, supposed to get, you know, we get and it's okay. MRI. Yeah. He should be okay, not big damage, but- Take it easy. That he was, well, he was on his knee, like not 100% during the fight, like the second round and third okay. round. But still, I mean, it can be. We, do, it's not excuse. We don't have no, injury no, no. as an excuse. No, but yeah. But well, no, he's getting better. Now he's gonna get back next week, hopefully for 100 percent training. We were just waiting for his knee to get better. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, it seems that you that you take a special interest in developing fighters slowly, doing things right, bringing them into gyms that you feel comfortable, and working with people over there who you feel comfortable. So it's it's a very well thought out. You know, you're a smart guy, obviously, and you're doing this in, in the best way that protects the fighters' this is, careers. This is how it happens, yes. And they, the guys overseas, the first thing we have in, under the contract, when you move to the United States, you come into our gym, you staying with us, you know, I'm going to help you find, you know, crib, you're going to stay in the place, I'm going to help you get some part-time jobs, and we'll get you some sponsors, slowly. But the thing is, you come and stay in our family. Mm -hmm. You're gonna come, train, we have everything for you to be the best. So you stay with us. So no, you're not coming and fighting, like representing, I represent you, but you train somewhere else. That's not gonna work. You come and stay with us. So everybody, they're happy. Or why not? They come in the best gym. Yeah. They come with, to the best killers. Why not? Is there anywhere else they can go find a better place? Hell no. Yeah. No. That's amazing. And, and the fact that you're also going to keep them, the, the, you're going to make it easy for them not to stress about the, the life and the money and the, you got your job, you got your place, you can focus on fighting yes, and put everything into it. This is how I do. This is what, like how I was supporting the guys coming like, okay, you need a job. I get your job. I get your part-time job. I show you how to get a gym here and there. Take care of the documentation. We got immigration lawyer if you want to change some paperwork you know to the good way you so you stay you know legally and you can compete and live in the united states right. we'll get everything done i have everybody all these things set for them so the only thing i have to stay and train and that's it did you learn about all that stuff just going like through it yourself or, or i've been just, through that yes because that then, doesn't seem like an easy thing for just you know it is to, not to it is yeah. not but i believe i believe in what i do i know if if you think about today, it's a different, but I do have, like, it's not good to think about tomorrow. You, you never know. You might just go to bed and never get up. But what I do is like, definitely is not for one day. Even I can't do it, but I knew that I planned that for future. This mm -hmm. guy, most of those guys coming like amateurs, like over 50 fights all over. As soon as they come here, they're already pro level. They just come here, go fight. So it's not for one, two days, for right. years. Right. You think that's a, is that, a, is that also like a culture thing or is that just like a personal thing where it's more, it's not about the money or the flash or the, or the fast fame or the, or getting there immediately. It's more, it's, it's like a, it's okay to have the hard work. It's okay to slow things down. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I, I experienced that a lot. You know, I was training and working at the same time. I knew that, okay, if I had some help, if I had some, you know, support, I might be like, okay, I'm not going to work this much. I want to work this much and I'll be training more. I might focus on my career, but it didn't happen. So this thing, my main thing is like helping these guys coming over. Of course, they start, they're going to represent where I'm from, my land, my people, yeah. you know, and at the same time, they represent my family here, my team, right. you know what I mean? And it's, I know I can help them with that. 
I know we have a loyal team, we have a good family, and they have everything for that. Why not help these kids if I can? Like I said, I was, I was gonna fight. I was gonna fight, then I was like, if I focus on myself, I might leave like 50 people behind right. who would be just training there, not reaching anything. You know, just train. Eventually, they, they train, and there is no support, and they stop. Right. You know, they're just killers, killers. They just need one opportunity right. to let them in this cage. That's it, one opportunity. And like straight and, up, and that's your that's where you come. That, that that's that's my people. Yeah. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Very we cool. have fighters here from Kazakhstan, my team, and from Georgia. These kids, they 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 now they can show what they have. You know, so we bring in. There's nothing against like American culture style training, yeah. but like we don't get this much opportunity back there. You know, when we come over here, see, you know, we can show the world what we have. That's a hunger, you know, they can go like 100%. They just dedicate themselves. It's like different, you know. Right. Here, most of the guys, like they train, but they think it's how it's supposed to be. But now, no, we, we, we fix that in the gym. They know, they know how it is over there and they see how much people train. Right. They don't have opportunities. Well, there's a difference between like a need to fight versus a want to fight, right? Like they, yes. they feel like they need to fight. Where maybe here it's a little bit more relaxed, you know. It, it, or... Everything is ready. CFFC here, uh, UFC here, Bellator here. Everything is based in the United States. Right. Like they don't come from outside. Like okay, I gotta Just work. Dying out. for the opportunity to finally get there. But we have fighters like being here, grew up like Sean Reddy, mm -hmm. Pat Sabatini. There's a lot of guys that show that you know they're disciplined. They they want it. They work hard. Yeah. So you know what they are and right now the level they are. Right. It's not about like all the guys. It is the guys. These guys like motivating right. a lot of guys in here. It takes a special level of dedication yeah. and and. But it's like not everybody. Yeah, but we're building this now. We're building that. We're working on it so hard. All right. So at least everybody has it. If you're, if you have the skills and you have the the, the willingness to to take that that approach, then you you have a chance to succeed. If, and yes. if you don't, yes, you don't. Sir. You know. Um. So who who in the game doing what you're doing at the highest level? Do you admire? or Do you kind of want to be like where where do you see yourself in the in the? Nobody. All right. I don't see anybody. I've seen uh, managers, they like most of the managers, they take first. I mean, I don't think anybody be like, okay, I'm going to take this fighter, invest from the beginning, mm -hmm. and I don't know where this guy going. I might lose. Yeah. But most of the managers, they get in the fighters who are ready. You know, they come, sign, start making money. I haven't made a dollar. We have been in the fights. We've been fighting all over the world. I don't make a dime. Anything they get paid, it's in their pocket. You know, eventually we get to the top level, yeah. you know, high level. And then, you know, of course, it's, it's going to be part of a business. But for now, I don't know anybody, any manager like me. Okay, I don't, I'm, I'm going to invest my time and then, you know, financially, time, physically. And I don't know where this guy go. But I'm, I'm risking but I know that it's worth it because I'm doing not because of the where we go after this. I don't know where we go. Maybe this guy come be successful. Maybe he's not loyal. Maybe he come and grow. By the time he start making money, be like goodbye. I'm gonna go somewhere else. I don't care about that. I'm doing because I love to help people as part of my culture, part of my religion. I give it to the God's hand. Anything happens, I'm I'm doing good. I'm happy, always happy with that. Anything I do, first of all, I do because of the God. I do it for the sake of God, then the rest. It's, it's up to them. If somebody leave me, I'm winning. I'm still winning. I never lose. So if I'm doing because of something more important yeah. than money, right. you know, I'm not losing anything. I'm happy with what I do. I'm happy, I'm happy with my team. If anybody, everybody leave me, I have my coaches right here, Daniel and John. Mm -hmm. I'm rich with them. I love that mentality, man. I really, you know, you know I, I speaking for myself, it's it. When you don't grow up with that mentality, it's really hard to to think that way first. Even if you want to think that way first, it's hard for your brain not to immediately think, you know, well, oh, I'm not gonna spend all that time, and then this person then just abandoned me, 
And then, you know, I, it's it's just a mindset, right? It's, it's like that's it's yes. a culture thing, it's a religion yeah. thing, it's a mindset thing. Uh, but what a great way to be. Right. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing that everything is going. I get a lot of support. We, to, you know, they connected me to Rob, the, uh, Rob Haida. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Now we have a lot of good plans. We have big thing coming. Unfortunately, I can't. Tell, you're gonna be one of the first guys. My man. To know, like, as a big things coming. Very big things. We'll Love just it. team up with Rob. Rob helping me is giving me a lot of opportunities. That's great. Yes, definitely. Yeah. I spoke with him on here about man, about him. management. You know, it's. He, he, he knows there's bad management and there's good management. And good management you can work with and you can help each other. Bad management, you don't even want to deal with a fighter. So the fighter loses even, even if they're good people, even if they're doing good things, but just because of management. So right. it's an important role that you play. You know, in, Rob in, helping our guys so much, you know. He's the type of person that he don't show on social media and stuff like, okay, hit what I'm doing, hit what I'm yeah. doing. He's not showing that, but... Deep inside his heart, he's 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 the real man, yeah. and yeah, I so he has the same love for I the sport. Resp I respect him a lot because he he's helping yeah. so much. Like not only our guys, he got a lot of guys helping who's fighting under the CFFC, and it's not because of like he wants something from them. He might like me, don't know where this guy go after this, but he's still helping them. Yeah, as a, as a, I have a lot of respect for Rob. Now I'm 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 grateful for all my team. I'm with Rob. And with the team, and I have my manager. You have all those things in place. Yes, sir. That's yeah. great, man. Well, congratulations. That's Thank fantastic. You, brother. Um, are you gonna eat anything else? Should I keep on I'm eating? I'm good, brother. This is amazing. Okay. You can, you, can, you can warm. You gotta warm it up, and then you know that that's good. Usually, I eat samosa with the with the tea, with the tea? hot green tea. Yeah. Yes, that that's amazing. I like sweet tea. You okay. can you can do the, if you like sweet tea, green sweet tea. That's traditionally how we eat it, you know. That's you know, like I say, cooked under the underground. Uh -huh. You can feel it, right? The smell of the, the earthy smoke and in that, yeah. Mm. It is good. I'm learning to uh, drink more tea. I've always been just like a coffee. In Puerto Rico, we just drank coffee from when we were like six. I know. I'm. I'm. I'm I love coffee. So, I'm. I'm so addicted to coffee. Yeah. I don't wake up. I, I have. I don't have my coffee. It, correct. Me too. I used to have several coffees a day and then my stomach just started not allowing it so i do a morning coffee and then i started trying to do like a tea midday or you know or at night or whatever that's so it's going good <laughs> i'm learning um so did you see the fights last weekend the ufc fights yeah i did yeah what did you think of uh, uh what's the name of uh, holland his performance uh his per i mean the way he fights is good he's a good striker it's like he reminds me of uh, MVP, Michael Venom mm, Page. Page. Yeah, yeah. But Habib kept telling him, like, yo, you need to work on your hips, man. Control your hips. When he gets taken down, nothing happening. But he keep. I mean, it's his lifestyle. If his style, fighting style, he talks. Yeah. I didn't even listen. It's funny to listen. Yeah. But, like, stylistically, it was a bad matchup for him, you know. Like, yeah. He well, took it's, him down. it seemed like he could have he completely dominated the fight. If yeah. he implemented some takedown defense, right? He didn't. That's the, that's the, yeah. And and I love that. So let, before we keep on going with that, Khabib or Habib? Because everybody calls him Habib. Habib. It's Habib. It's Habib. It's Habib. H. So you know Puerto Rico, you know it's easy for you. Right. Habib. Habib. All right. And like that pronounced like that? Or, or just Like, right. like J, when you J is mm -hmm. called He, like any word like in Spanish, you have a lot of He, yeah. right? Because there's yeah. some people in the media that call him Habib. And then... But they sound silly because everybody else says could be even the same interview. And so, I'm like, I give you an example. Like I send you my name, right? Yeah. It's like K H is like K in the United States. When you see K H coming together, you call it like you say K, right? Right. Uh, my last name is R A K H I M O V Rakimov. That's what they call it. But it's Rahim is like Arabic word, like right. H. And Khabib is same thing. It's KH is because of the, it's been translated from Russian to English. Right. And Russian does not have a he. They have he or ke. You know what I mean? Right. That's why KH comes together to make it he, Khabib or Khabib because it comes with K. Right. But his name is Habib. All right. Yeah. So, but, but it doesn't, it's not offensive to call him Khabib? No, he's, he's okay with that. 
He's they, used to it. Of course, yeah. Khabib, Khabib. You know, in Russia they call him Khabib because of Russian, like With Russian that. people, like, like like Russian Russians, they can't say hey, like. Habib can say it because his name is Habib and he's Dagestan. He's not Russian, right? And he can he can say Habib, but all the people can say around like Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, all the former Soviet Soviet Union, they easily can can say Habib. Like hey, J, K, this this letters we have it. When you say they can't say, you mean they, it doesn't come naturally to say it that way? Like yeah, they, yeah, we have. It's just to, hard to say it that yeah, way. Most of the things comes, you know. I think the religion, you know, Islam with Muslims, like Habib Muslim. Like 100% Dagestan is Muslim, like 98%. Yeah. And in all those countries, like more Muslims, we've been reading Quran, you know, they say Quran, they say Quran. Okay. You see, like difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's it, these letters, it's most of people who can't pronounce, but they've been reading and studying since they was young. Okay. And it makes it like more easier. But okay. yeah, he's Habib. Habib. All right. So it was interesting that he had Habib there, uh, giving him tips. And then after the fight, he was like, just with one tip that he gave me, I was able to take him down. <laughs> so maybe yeah, I should focus on I that. Focus that. Yeah. Hey, come on, man. Nah, he he's a good fighter, but I don't think he like. Can you imagine him like fighting somebody like I don't know, like high level like Jack Hermanson, taking right. him down? He can submit him, finish him right there. Right. You know, but he's a good fighter. I like his style. You yeah. know the way he moves. He hits hard. He hits his hard. Timing, when he lands that his right timing, hand. His timing very good, but he got. Little too much doing playing over overplayed his game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he had to focus, stay stay low. You know. You see all the time it's hard. Like you see, he's a good boxer. We say okay, work on your takedown defense. He's working. He's definitely working on his takedown with defense. But in the base, like background, he's not a wrestler. He's not. Right. A, and it's really hard to like. You can he can defend the takedown from the, another kickboxer. Who's shooting a takedown is much easier, but it was like a grappler or wrestler shoots. Right. It is really hard to get those hips back, and then he's gonna take. So it what down. do you? Oh. So what do you do? Like if if you didn't grow up doing it, uh, can you catch up ever? Like to at least be able to compete of at a high course. level? Of course, it's, yeah. it's 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 up practice. To, it's up to you. You gotta practice. You gotta work hard on that. You know, every it's a high level. Like they fight it in UFC, they have to be well-rounded in every you know position everything they go there they have to be ready for that it's not only like he knows how to strike yeah, his yeah. timing good he's getting taken down it looked like he never worked on getting back up if you don't work on your takedown defense at least work on your jujitsu you know yeah to know how to defend like the get get back up or just put on threat on some submissions yeah. that he'd be like okay it's dangerous to keep taking him down Right, but he it, it seemed like he didn't work on that. Yeah, I mean it was a good fight, but I didn't like it. Yeah, no, I it was, like, it was like, frustrating. It man. was a good fight, but it's, I was expecting. I said, you know, first, second, first or two rounds, Holland gonna knock him out. That, yeah. that's but Bronson. That's is, what I was expecting too. Experience. You remember he what he did to Shabazian, the young guy. Yeah, that same thing. People be like, okay, but now I start with uh, respect Bronson because yeah, he's he's, he's very like. He's he's I like his style and he don't do a lot of stuff. He just focus on his fight the right. He's good. It was smart. It was smart. It was frustrating for the audience wanting to see a striking match, but um, but he was smart to do what he had to do. I mean, he was controlling it completely. Smart way, yes. Yeah, that's okay. You know, it was you're good. not winning. You're not winning many fans that way. If right? he would have stood up and you know and, and said, you know what, all right, I I'm know, gonna take I I'm know. gonna take a, a round off here and I'm gonna focus on striking. Yeah. But he was getting caught. Yeah, was that where, uh, was that like a boring fight? It, it, it was, yeah. Uh, because we were expecting a fight where it's like come and knock out yeah. and stuff, but it didn't happen. Yeah, it happens a lot in UFC. But he wasn't doing too much. Like he wasn't really going for the ground and pound too much either. I mean, he tr he he landed a couple of solid just so winning, was, winning the rounds, but just winning, winning the rounds, winning the winning points. Rounds. So that's what I think it makes the difference between a boring fight and an up. You can take. I mean, watching Habib on the ground is is something that's, impressive. Oh, that's different. Yeah, that's impressive, and that's on the ground. So it's not really. It's like what are you doing with the time? Like, if you have the ref telling you, you guys got to work. Yes. Is the Bronson yeah. the best? He is the best wrestler in the middleweight division? No. But is he better than uh, Holland in the ground game? Yes. Obviously. That's why he used it. Yeah. Because he got caught a couple of times. You see him like he was like wobbling. Like, oh, oh, yeah. That's oh, yeah. Because he got twice. Yeah. That was a good fight. Yeah. 
It was, right. it was my last fight in Puerto Rico, and I enjoyed it. I was, eh, whatever. You know, let's just watch it. Any, really whatever is on, let's just sit it here really and good. enjoy it. It was great. Um, but this weekend, we have a big UFC um, pay-per-view. I can't wait for that. Yeah. Stipe and Ngannou. We can start from the top. What do you think? Um, so, I'll, let me not keep on eating. Hold on. <laughs> what do you think about Ngannou's... Uh, Everybody wanting Nganu to have the rematch with Stipe. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah. Because I can tell you my thoughts, but I'll let you go first. Because uh, first fight, when they had fight, even in the first fight, I was thinking like, okay, Nganu going to knock him out because he came like, you know, his durable power, mm -hmm. all that speed. And then Stipe played a smart game. It was a tough fight for him. He took him down. He kept controlling. He was pushing his game that what I think and Gano didn't have that much experience at that time. Mm -hmm. Maybe he had the same power, same, you know, energy, cardio. Maybe cardio is a little better now, but experience, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't ready for that. He was like, okay, I'm going to go out and knock him out. Now he's get, every fight you watch him, he's getting smart, you know. He rushed a little bit against the, uh, what is the other guy from Islands? Uh, Jarzinho. And got uh, Rosenstreit? Really, Rosenstreit, yeah. yeah. He just he knocked him out. Yeah. He was just a little rushing. He could cut him too. Mm -hmm. But I see, I watch, I follow him. I respect Ngano a lot because yeah. he's he's been through he's been through hard times. You yeah. know, I know his you know like story where he came from, what yeah. how he did. He came from nothing, yeah. And but he, he he's learning a lot. He's learning a lot. He's just getting better when you see his trainings, his timing, and his ground. If he puts a, a little bit of ground game, like work on that, mm -hmm. I don't think anybody can beat him. Okay. Like he's, he's, he's very good. So my, my, I just felt like, I mean, I guess by the time now it's happening, it makes sense. But when they started talking about him getting the second, the rematch, I was thinking like, but it was a dominant performance by Stipe. Like what do, what, what's the, what's the real interest? Is it that they think that he, on the first fight, didn't get to land the power shot? You know what I mean? Like, what really makes people want to see the fight again? Compared no, what, what I was thinking, experience, everybody. You know, heavyweight, all these heavyweight top, they, they fought each other like at least twice, one yeah, time. Yeah. But why we want to watch this fight? Because we really want to, like, is there any other fight you want to watch somebody against TP besides, like, Ngano? I don't. Right. I want to watch that. I want to see how right. that'll go. If the second one, go, second time it goes the same way, Stipe is the king. He is the king today. But yeah. let's let's see how uh, you know Ngano yeah. go through that. That would be impressive. Yes, two wins I over Ngano at two different levels. I you know, can't wait. Yes, yeah, that would be amazing. Do you think that Ngano wins? And if so, is John Jones his next fight? Uh I think John Jones is a smart guy. It depends on uh, what I think. It depends on uh, Engano's performance, how he wins. If he defends steepest takedowns, it goes like late rounds, third and fourth round, and Engano be still in Gano and catch him and just ground and pound or finish him in a fashion way, mm -hmm. showing that he got his takedown defense set, his power there, and mm -hmm. he got smart. I don't think John Jones will fight him. You don't think so? I don't think so. But if we see Stipe take him down, control him, you see some, you know, the only thing I see John Jones fighting in Ghana where he could take him down and control him on the ground. Right. I don't see, I don't see John Jones knocking Stipe, I mean, and Gano out on, on be, the field. Yeah. Yeah. I don't see that. I mean, it might happen, but I don't see John, I don't see John Jones knocking him out. Yeah. And then, that's that's what I think. It depends how fight goes. Mm -hmm. If Ngano comes out, knock out Stipe in the first round, like in the first second, first minutes, then John Jones might fight him. You know, because right, like, he doesn't me, get to let, see. Let me go and do my thing. But mm -hmm. if Stipe will start shooting and it's not going through, even like taking down, he get back up. You see, like easy way, he's getting back up and start beating him. I don't think John Jones. Do you will think take Stipe that. takes the same approach again and Definitely. takes him down? Yes, he of won't, course. He won't. He's gonna shoot. I think the first thing is gonna go grab him. That's it. He's not gonna stay with him. No. Stipe is getting all. He knows he's being knocked out. You know, Stipe is a smart fighter and yeah. big heart. I love Stipe, yeah. but he's smart. He's not. He's not gonna stay in Bangu and Gano. No. Who wants to stay in Bangu no. and Gano? 
Does no. it get any scarier than no. a gano in front of you? <laughs> hey, you look at him. No, I don't want to be with this no, guy no, no. That's in a the whole, cage. Right? <laughs> a whole different type of human being. That's a scary man. Um, all right. So then, as far as the pick, you got who was a winner? Uh, and Gano knock him out. And yeah. Gano by knockout. Second round, first, first, you know, second round is gonna finish him. All right. I'm gonna. <laughs> I don't say it. like I. I, I can I, see that. I can see that. So I feel you. But I, I'm gonna go Stipe. Um, I'm gonna go Stipe by decision. With experience again, right? Yeah. Was yeah, that's that happened? That can yeah. happen. Yeah. What I was thinking, like because of it was, you know, Engano was in a like experience. Like I say, you know, he was just new. He did, he wasn't there with somebody like Stipe. He thought that I'm gonna go just go like anybody else, just yeah. swing and knock him out. Even he was fighting me, which he can't. And Stipe was ready for all those hooks, mm -hmm. you know, or uppercut, he was, he was seeing it. But this time it's different because they've yeah. they fought before. Maybe it's going to make it more easy for Stipe this time. Yeah. You know, I'm mean, just go grab him, take him down, right. take his back. we never seen somebody taking Ngannou's back. Right. You never know. But, like, I can't see it, man. And but psych psychologically, guy. too, Ngannou knows that's the man who's already beat him and has to the tools to beat him. Um, and then Stipe doesn't have the same fear that maybe other fighters have in facing somebody who's a power as as much of a power puncher as as Engano. So I wonder if that comes into play at all, where Engano ends up not performing the way he has been performing, and uh, and Stipe is a little more confident like, in his game. Yeah. You know, that makes it interesting. That's why I want to watch this fight. Yeah, there, you can't say nothing in heavyweight you don't know. Like Derek Lewis fought last yeah. last time. Just takes Ooh. one punch. Bam, one uppercut. What a perfectly yeah. time uppercut. Yes. He's like, he's been waiting for that. Everybody said Derek Lewis here and there, but he's smart. I he knows Derek what he's Lewis. doing. Oh, man, that's my man. <laughs> he's all, hey, not only is he awesome, oh, he's he funny. <laughs> he's good, you know. And every fight he says he's going to lose weight, and he comes back and he still is heavy, but he's, <laughs> but he's still a <laughs> He's good. Up. I he's, like He's him. awesome. And, uh, and I like the fact that he said, I was waiting. I was waiting. I knew he'd come in at some point, and I would land the uppercut. So that was that was. Yeah, he was. He, he wasn't say He was saving his energy and power. Yeah. Like what, he knew that, like yeah. at the end, he's gonna go for that takedown. That all it took was one mess one up. Thing. Boom. Yeah. Not power. mess up, but just one dangerous uh, attempt on, on on his part. Um, Tyron Woodley takes on Luke. Okay, that's an interesting fight, but uh, I'm saying it's an easy way for Luke. Yeah. Really. I don't so is that the end of Woodley? It can be. Right. I mean, you can come back because of he has a good relationship with UFC. That's the only thing he can. But if you look from the professional side, like any other fighters, when it's the end, that can be. I don't see he's coming back with another fight. Right. You know, like coming back like he came back killing everybody. Woodley is different. Woodley now is being there. He had his time. He was a champion. Hunger, he don't have that, he have hunger. but he's coming and making some money in this fight. And yeah. he, the only thing he's thinking that, like, hoping he can just throw a good punch right. and catch him, maybe. But like, Luke is a hell of a fighter 80 and 20. He's gonna, I think he's gonna like outwork him and destroy him. He can't even I finish like Luka. him. No, like yeah. he's good. He, he's, um, he's like everything you want to see in a fighter, like, as far as right. You know, as an enjoyable watch, he's he's uh, he's he's right up there. His, that's what to me made Wonder Boy look that much better re in the recent fights right. when he beat him. I'm like, that's like that's a guy who's not an easy win for that, anybody. That, that was that that how he put the world on notice that he's not a joke, right? right? He's like, I'm coming, I'm serious, I'm right. I'm top five, top eight, top seven. Yeah, I like Luke. And and Woodley was so dominant for the time that he was dominant in the UFC. I mean, not only could he take you down. In a way where it was just like, listen, you, you're not, you're not, uh, you not know, you're not. A, yeah, it was very, uh, very aggressive takedowns, but the overhand rights and the, like the, his his um, speed, right, timing, the, right, okay. exactly. The way he would go from here to there and hit you was was something unlike a lot of other fighters were doing at that time. But then uh, he's shown that he's not the same guy anymore. I'm sure he still has all the same skills and all the same, but it's like whether it's the hunger, yeah, or the hunger. whether it's the the level of competition that he's facing. That continues to evolve, you know. Does he fought somebody in the same level as Luca? Yes, he did. He fought many killers. He fought, he fought Carlos Condit. He fought like uh, Robbie Lawler. Like, let me just put these guys away. 
he does have that, uh, you know, fa face somebody like Luke. But it, the time, yeah. matter of time, hunger. That's that's very important for a fighter. Hunger, when they get in the cage, that's something that they only can build it in themselves, mm -hmm. like nobody else. Coaches can teach you how to fight. You know, your partners, your managers can push you, give you motivation. But it's you. It's you against you before mm -hmm. you're fighting somebody else. Right. That's very, very important for fighters right. to control the... You know the motivation not always be there it, you can lose your motivation business family here and there injuries any yeah. a lot of things happen in life you know what i mean and if you the the main thing like we say again discipline yeah. you have to be disciplined to control all that yeah it, it comes and go but if that's the focus yeah. on this if, if the brain's not telling the body what to do or it's it, or you're you're not a seeing eye to eye on what you should be doing it's just not gonna happen, right. especially yeah. in this level. Yeah, at this level, no one, one mistake. One mistake, you sleep. Correct. So it's it always chances are it'll always uh, the win will always land on the on the person who's tuned in, who Ready, wants that win more focused. than anything. Yep. Yeah. That's it. So what's your pick on that? Uh, Luca. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna go Luca. Luca, Luca finishing. Like I don't see so? going decision. Luca have to put like put his name out there, finishing Tyron Woodley. Because that'd be a great win. Right. If he finish him, he'd probably get top three, somebody, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Who's uh, who's next for him? I see maybe Covington, Colby, possibly, if he's mm -hmm. not fighting for Bell. He's not fighting for Bell. Right. Or I see Burns, maybe. Burns would be good. Yeah, that's a good fight. But let's see this fight. I mean, I like Tyron Woodley, but I like Luke more. Yeah. Because, you know, he's I'm a hard I'm worker. You can see he's a hard worker. Yeah. And he, he, he's a good fighter. He's well rounded. He got everything, and he got a, a line heart. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna go Luke too. I think I think also finish. I'm, I'm gonna agree with you on that. Uh, but it would be nice to see. Time like I'm starting to to root for for Woodley every time now because I want him to to show who he was. You to know, to back, sh yeah. show that he could overcome that that rut that he had the, for a little bit. Yeah. But if it's time to you know he's talented in in other ways too. He doesn't need to be. Fighting if he doesn't want to be. He's, he's, he's singing, rapping, making it he, heaven his business. He's on, on TMZ. He has money. He's good. He's UFC. fine. Yeah. So maybe don't take a punch in the face once in a while. You know, it's, yeah. right. it's not a big deal. <laughs> uh, all right. So we got Luke on that. And then Sean O'Malley versus Thomas Almeida. That's an interesting fight. So this this fight is good matchup for uh, Sean O'Malley. Yeah. Yeah, is is no now he's coming. I think he's coming completely different. Sean O'Malley, mm -hmm. his last two fights didn't work his way, especially the last fight. You know, I think he was he was really like disrespecting. Mm -hmm. You know, his opponent, the last opponent, first, and he was not expecting him coming this this much on him. Mm -hmm. And I forgot his name, his last opponent. Uh, he fought. Yeah, me too. But this is the one where he he quit. That's where he quit. Yeah, I mean, they say it's not, but he quit. He he was just he finished him. He could not control anything. Yeah, that Tom, that fight that bummed me out because I like Sean O'Malley. I like him too. Yeah, and he had the potential to be, or he looked like he had the potential. But there's nothing worse than seeing somebody who you feel is taking taking the opportunity to, to get out. Like and it really seemed that way. It's again, it's something like these guys, you know, going on the way up. You know, they have all potential. They have talent. They have everything. But they start being superstar too early, yeah. you know. That's too early for him. He got a lot of attention, social media, sponsors, UFC here and there. Got a lot of fan ba like fan bases, like very bad for, very big for him. For the guy who just fought, started his UFC career like a couple of years back, yeah. and then it's because of his style and stuff, you know. I'm just, yeah. but uh, on this fight, uh, Thomas Almeida is a good striker. He's a very good striker. What I think about this fight, Sean O'Malley has to go to the ground. Okay. His jiu-jitsu is good. It's way better than Almeida. Okay. If he stay and strike with Almeida, it can happen because Almeida can knock him out. Right. And or Sean O'Malley is the 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 reach is longer. He can. And he has power. Him. He got power. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm I'm going with Sean O'Malley with this fight. I think. I'm going with decision. He's gonna go decision. Decision. decision yeah. Okay. You got me here and there. Good fight, mm -hmm. you know. But Sean O'Malley decision. Which is probably what he needs also for his career. Yeah, he needs to finish this guy if he wants to like be. He needs hey, to finish the guy to be at the level that he was. Yes. But for his longevity in his career, he just needs a good 
no, three fight rounds. And win. Yeah. Right, a good win. That shows that he's he's back mentally, physically. He can he can dominate. Is he proven if he beats uh, Thomas Almeida like he was before? No, Thomas Almeida so. not guy not the guy. He'd be like, okay, next I don't know Cody Garbrandt like he was calling somebody. He 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 don't, he can't call somebody out level. unless he just knock him out in first minute like cold. And we're like, oh, Sean O'Malley is back. But still, it's it's a tough fight for him. Speaking of of, uh, of Garbrandt, did you hear that they're. I don't know if it's official, but that they were going to line him up with, um, with uh, what's his name? Font? Rob Font. Yeah, that's, that's on. That's official. That's, that's, that's a kill. I got fight. excited about that one. That that's is a good very, fight, man. Very good fight. A font, font is, font is good. not a joke. He's not fun. I mean, he's, yeah. he's, <laughs> he's not a joke. I like the guy. Yeah, me too. I and mean, we don't know much about him because he's not like that bright yet. Yeah. But he's he's, he's that's a, if, if that if that if that ends up being a really good fight, and that's kind of like well actually Calvin Cater and Font are in the same team, right? Yes, they're from, yeah. So, but I was gonna say, it's kind of the same deal as Cater and Max Holloway. Max Holloway. Where no matter what, man, you're still earning the respect of the viewer. Definitely. Yeah. So I think if Font uh, loses to to Garbrandt in a way, you know, where he puts on a, a show. He wins, even if he loses. You know what I mean? But what I... Yes, you're right. I'm agree with that 100%. Yeah. What I am looking at this fight, like, I don't I don't see uh, Rob, uh, like, the font. He's, he's losing to, to Cody. I like Cody. Yeah. Because I like his style. I like yeah. his lifestyle. He's, he's a good man. And he's just... He's team up with some of my friends. You know, he's a good guy. But uh, I think I think he's going to go, like, font. He's coming hungry. He's yeah. going to show the yeah. world. These guys coming very hungry. Cody was there, same thing like Woodley, you know? Yeah. The fight he knocked out Asun Sao. Yeah. That happened, you know, because it ended wrong. Heck of a punch. It could, it could happen, <laughs> like, either way, this way or that way. Even we know Cody, you just start swinging. He don't care about his yeah. chin and just go. But this fight, this fight is very interesting. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to believe everything he said recently uh, about how mentally all sorts of things were happening and physically. And from the moment he had the belt, he wasn't he wasn't there like he was hungry wise before, and that he has that back. I'm gonna believe that because yeah. that makes it exciting, right? To, to I'll, see I'll the be fight. happy if he and that wins. Would be awesome. Yes. So I'm gonna believe that he's got that fire back because when when he was when he was fought uh, Dominic Cruz, that was he was that, putting that on was a performance. A that was know? a Cody. We want to see that Cody. Right. So a even top if he five, wins, win, it'd be nice. Top five banter where you see those killers. We want, we want, we need Cody out there. Yeah. Yes. So, um, that's, and then I saw, uh, well, I'm, I'm going all over the place, but um, San Hagen and TJ Dillashaw. That's, 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 that's what, what is uh, San Hagen been asking for this fight for uh -huh. like since last year? Hey, TJ, you come back. I'm going to fight. Because they've been training. I trained with San Hagen in the same gym. Oh, I, yeah. I, yeah, I was there. Yeah, oh, in, in Colorado. Colorado. Yeah, in Colorado. Yeah. yeah. It's, what, a, what a good guy, man. Yeah. It's, it's like, it's a guy you see him outside. He'd be like, no, this guy is not a fighter. He's like a teacher somewhere yeah. in the school. Very humble, very nice guy. But he's he's young too. Yeah. Now he's this fight is he's so good. That's I don't know. I like TJ. I like Sanhagen. Let's see the better man. Yes, I think if TJ worth. wins that fight, he's just he's gonna become the bad guy. You know what I mean? Like as an image thing. Because it's like TJ just got done his suspension, so he already did something bad. Came back to stop and people. comes back and then beats up the, the guy nice guy like, who looks like you know who's a teacher, you know that type of thing. Uh, you're good. the bad guy, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. TJ <laughs> needs this. TJ needs to look bad because you know, like we don't know yet how TJ comes back, what's shaping him. But yeah. I believe he comes, he comes in a great shape. Of course. TJ is very smart and he's still young. He's not too old. He got everything to go come back and be a champion. Yeah. Like most of people, like there's a title fight set. There's Aljamain Sterling and Peter Young. They have to go run it back. There's many things left, but yeah. people talking about who TJ, TJ. and mm -hmm. Peter Young. People are like, oh, we want to see that fight. Yeah. Because they've seen all these fights already. They want TJ back. Yeah. I want TJ back. Definitely. He, I mean, listen, we, we forgive that whole situation, right? Like he, as a as a fighter. He's still yeah, one of the best. Everybody makes mistakes. We're not perfect. So let's just, you know, you know, bring it back and do it the right way this time who, and show who, that you who still does, have. Who doesn't make mistakes? Who does not? Like, that's wrong. Right. Everybody makes mistakes. Yeah. TJ, he's coming back smarter. Yeah. I know he's smart. 
you think people will see past the 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 banned substance situation and of and allow him to be a winner and not criticize him and say oh he's probably if on he EPO? comes back clean and then you know show the best performance why not john jones got cut many times Many of these fighters got caught. Who did? Who didn't cut? But TJ and got caught with the real stuff. <laughs> the <laughs> thing got... is, he he had. The, I don't. I don't see it as an excuse. I don't. For me, it's not excuse. But for him, he could say like, "I'm coming down 125. I had to recover. Yeah. I had lose so yeah. many weights." Yeah. You could see that, but it's still not excuse. Yeah. For me, TJ comes back to take this title. He's a champion. Yeah. I still, I still respect him the same way. Because yeah. I, I, I love TJ style. Yeah. It's, it's different. He, we, he's definitely missed. He's been missed. He showed all these. us a lot of footwork that people being straight fighting, coming back old yeah. school. He changed a lot of footwork and people learn from him. Yeah, yeah. He's good. I agree. So, all right, so we, let's wrap this up so we can finish eating after the show. Uh, yes, sir. You have some fights coming up this week, CFFC? We'll have uh, our teammates coming, yes. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, we, have, we have big fights actually coming. We have a title fight on 155. Okay. Zurich, Zulkai 9, the guy from Kyrgyzstan. The one just knock out the last fight. He uh -huh. knocked the guy out in just like in, in a fashion, like in a crazy fashion way. And he's fighting for the belt now. And it's a big opportunity for him. That's it's, great. He's my teammate. And then uh, there's another Georgian guy. He's, he's fighting. He's tough. He's a mountain guy. Yeah. He's like 2-0 and amateur. He fights on welterweight. But he, he comes with a real power and big heart. That's that's the fight. We have Isa, the guy from Albania. Mm -hmm. If you know Isa. Yeah, Isa is is real deal. This guy comes to kill all the time. He leaves everything in there. Okay. And uh, we have uh, James from Delaware. These guys coming down from Delaware already been like in the team. Mm -hmm. They have their own gym. They train out there, but like main gym, they come and train with us. Okay. Uh, a couple of these guys from Delaware, you know. So you guys got a lot of people. Yeah, he's making his uh, pro debut. Oh nice. Yeah, it's good, good. I re today I work with him. He's good. He's ready to he's go. Ready to go. Yeah, he's ready to go. That's awesome. They fight Thursday and uh, is it Thursday, Thursday? Friday. Yeah. yeah, Thursday and Friday. Yeah, okay. I, I'm excited. It's, yeah, it's awesome. a lot of a lot of more fights. We get. We're just waiting for, like, to for the contracts. You know, there's a couple of guys. If they get contract, um, yeah, that's good. They'll fight those days too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's good cards. It's awesome. very 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 thing. But like special car coming that's for our team, especially we last last card didn't go our way. Miles won, and then three of our mm -hmm. guys they lost. We have to come back and show that that was that was the wrong card. We're coming back. We're coming back. Put in an order. It's like no, we will back. I love it. Yeah, you My guys have a strong MMA, team. Daniel Gracie team. We're coming. We're coming. Kill. I'm, I'm, I I want to put. I want to send a message to the world. Like, Do it. Yeah. Yes, definitely. They. Everybody have to wait this year. The next year. It's gonna be one of the biggest gyms. It's gonna be one of the craziest, like, you know, fighters, like everybody be yeah. like, hey, you know this guy? Hey, you know that guy from Philadelphia, from yeah. Philadelphia, from Philly, this guy. Yeah. I've seen it already, and I can, and I, I'm, I, I've said it before, I'm, I'm pumped to to see it on a, on a national, international stage being brought up a lot, because they do it about AKA, they do it about all these other gyms. It'll be awesome. It's our time. It'll be I'm awesome when it's, it's our when time. It's yeah. The yeah. way we train, the way, you know, we teamed up, all the family, we trained, like, all the fights going on. We have good opportunities now, and we we, join, we have these guys joining from overseas. But our team here, we, we're coming, we're coming hard. We come, oh, yeah. This year, we come serious. Awesome. Like, they, they, just have to, they just have to keep their eyes on. They can't miss this. Can't we're wait, coming. man. Yes. I wish you guys tons of success this weekend. Um, anytime you want to come back. This is your home, man. This is awesome. I hope I'm gonna come with my coaches. I wanna pull them over here. I've like been they, trying they, to get they, a couple people yes, in here after the you know, fights, at, at once because I think it'd be fun. Yeah, yeah. After 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 this week, we'll come. Like hopefully we we'll get to Coach Daniel, like Coach John, sit Let's and do talk. It next here. week, man. Yes, sir. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for having me, brother. I appreciate you, brother. Appreciate it so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, brother.